syntax graph. Syntax diagrams or railroad diagrams are a way of representing a context-free grammar. They represent a graphical alternative to BNF or to EBNF. Early books using syntax diagrams include the Pascal User Manual written by Nicholas Wirth. In the completion field, textual representations like BNF or its variants are usually preferred. BNF is a well understood by compiler writers and compilers, but is not well understood by most users of languages. Railroad diagrams are more readily understood by most people. Some of the popularity of the JSON data interchange format is due to representation in railroad diagrams. Basic concepts. These are the three basic concepts in syntax graph. Sequence can be shown in this way, and alternation can be shown in this way. Iteration can also be represented in this graph. Consider this example. Statement can be described by statement followed by curly brackets, semicolon and statement. The syntax graph for this is shown here. Terminals are shown by a circle and non-terminals are shown by a rectangle. Recursion can be shown in this way. Expression can be a variable added to another variable or a variable subtracted from another variable or just a variable. BNF is a family of meta syntax notations used for expressing context free grammars. Because of a few minor inconveniences in BNF, it has been extended in several ways. Most extended versions are called extended BNF or simply eBNF. Even though they are not all exactly the same. The extensions do not enhance the descriptive power of BNF. They only increase its readability and writability. Three extensions are commonly included in the various versions of eBNF. The first of these denotes an optional part of an right hand side which is eliminated by brackets. Without the use of brackets, the syntactic description of this statement would require two rules. The second extension is the use of braces in a right hand side to indicate that the enclosed part can be repeated indef indefinitely or left out together. This extension allows list to be built with a single rule instead of using recursion and two rules. Optional terms of BNF EBNF allows optional terms in the grammar rules through the use of square brackets. Second extension is the use of braces to indicate that the enclosed pattern can only be repeated indefinitely or simply left out. Third extension is the use of round brackets 
to group several terms combined with or symbol. Fourth extension is clean cross, used to describe a sequence of one or more strings from the same syntactic category. Fifth extension is clean star, used to describe a sequence of zero or more strings from the same syntactic category. Optional terms can be represented by square brackets, zero or more represented by curly brackets. Alternation of expression can be represented by a pipeline operator. Zero or more expression is represented by an asterisk mark. One or more expression is represented by a plus sign. BNF and EBNF versions of an expression's grammar. Expression can be described by expression plus term or expression minus term or a term. Term can be described by term times factor or term divided by factor of just the term. The EBNF version for that grammar is The BNF grammar for example 4 is a sign is described by ID equal expression and ID is described by A or B or C. Expression is described by expression plus expression or expression times expression or expression followed by ID. The converted EBNF grammar is the number of statements in this grammar is reduced by using the pipeline operator. Some common uses of BNF. Most programming language standards use some variant of EBNF to define the grammar of the language. This has two advantages. There can be no disagreement on what the syntax of the language is and it makes it much more easier to make compilers because the parser for the compiler can be generated automatically with a compiler like Jack. EBNF is also used in many other standards such as definitions of protocol formats data formats and markup languages such as XML and CGML. HTML is not defined with the grammar. Instead, it is defined with an CGML DTD which is sort of a high-level grammar. How to use a formal grammar? Okay, now you know what BNF and EBNF are, what they are used for, but perhaps not why they are useful or how you can make advantage of them. The most obvious way of using a formal grammar has been already mentioned in passing. Once you have given a formal grammar for your language, you have completely defined it. There can be no further disagreement on what is allowed in the language and what is not. This is extremely useful because a syntax description in ordinary prose is much more verbose and open to different interpretations.
Another benefit is formal grammars are mathematical creatures and can be understood by computers. There are actually lots of programs that can be given. BMA grammars as input and automatically produce code for parsers for the given grammar. In fact, this is the most common way to produce a compiler by using so-called compiler compiler that takes a grammar as input and produce a parser code in some programming language. Of course, compilers do much more checking than just grammar, such as type checking, and they also produce code. None of these things are described in an BNF grammar. So, compiler compilers usually have a special syntax for associating code snippets called actions with the different productions in the grammar. The best known compiler compiler is YAC, yet another compiler compiler which produces C code, but others exist for C, Java, Python, as well as many other languages.